Hi, uh, my name is Gary Hamilton, and you are listening to CIDI 99.1 FM. Yeah, about myself. Well, uh, I started painting in kindergarten, and I'm 84, so uh, a lot of years. Uh, in my background, I was the cartoonist at the Montreal Star in the 70s. Uh, I was the first vice president of the Canadian Society of Painters from 2014 to 2018. My background is mostly in uh, illustration and teaching. I taught at Sheridan College in Ontario and Dawson College here in Montreal. And I was a, a journalist illustrator after I retired for the Cape Breton Post. So uh, a mix mostly of commercial illustration and some fine art. Since I retired, uh, I guess about 18 years ago, I've uh, been painting ever since, mostly watercolor. How did I get started? I went to the Ontario College of Art uh, in my 20s and uh, started for a little company called Cash of Canada Labels doing woven labels. And I continued to study at Sir George Williams University uh, and uh, also Concordia. And with the work that I did as a student there, I sent it to uh, Sheridan College. Their first year they were hiring teachers to teach in community colleges. So I was one of the very first back in the in the 60s to start a teaching in a community college. It's fun. I, I, I loved it. What my art is about. Uh, I'm an impressionist, which means that I really react to light and uh, I, I enjoy suggesting rather than stating everything. I, f I find that very representational, realistic art leaves nothing to the imagination, whereas impressionism intrigues the viewer because they have to invent for themselves. So it's a more uh, involved experience when uh, you suggest rather than tell. My own favorite work of art is always the last painting I did because uh, you keep on getting excited. It's like a new birth every time you produce a new painting and some of them work out well and some of them don't work out too well. So uh, at first you don't see the flaws. When you set it aside and look at it with fresh eyes, maybe two or three days further on, you'll see things that uh, you're not happy with and that you wish could change. Uh, I can talk about one painting here if you want. This is, uh, I think we have it on there. Yeah, uh, th this was a, a Zoom painting done of, of a life model, or a costume model, excuse me, uh, for Chesapeake Fine Art Studio. So the model was sitting there with the flowers in front, a bunch of file boxes behind her, and I invented drapes and put them in the same color as the couch so that there'd be a sense of unity. And I put it be beside a window because the light was coming from that direction. Then I had to figure out what to put in the window. So uh, I put in what's local to here, Lac Brome and the, the mountains in the background. So that's how that painting evolved. Uh, this is a, a self-portrait uh, painted from a mirror. This was in uh, the Dominican Republic and we were waiting to be rescued. <laughs> a repatriation flight. So uh, I did a lot of self-portraits. This is uh, Glenn Brown. He's a, a local uh, resident, lives near here, and uh, a very good model. And uh, I painted a lot of paintings of Glenn before the pandemic. Uh, and also over here we have uh, Sun Horse. 
Sun Horse is a Mohawk, and uh, I met him at the farmer's market in Sutton. And I did some sketches of him on the spot, with his permission, and uh, then did the painting when I came back home. So as you can see, not too much is, is shown here. There's a lot that's suggested, so you can read into it. So that's my style. Yeah, other artists that inspire me, uh, well, John Singer Sargent is like the, the king of watercolor artists. Charles Reed was a big influence. I have most of his books and videos. I got uh, an early start in Cape Breton is where I really learned to do watercolor. And uh, Bill Rogers was uh, a major uh, influence on me there. He, uh, he lived in Cape Breton and uh, we would go painting together. So he didn't really tell me anything about painting, but he did tell me a lot about materials and how to get them. And I watched him, of course, so that was very instructive. All the paintings that fail uh, set you up for success because you learn from them. You, you learn from your mistakes, not your successes. So don't feel bad when you uh, you screw up with your painting because what you have to do then is to analyze why it didn't work and figure out how to make the next one work. Is there advice that upcoming artists should ignore? Yeah, ignore advice about how wonderful your painting is from your family and friends because they want to please you and they'll never give you a, a true analytical honest answer. So listen to your artist colleagues and instruct them to be honest to uh, because you can't grow unless you are honest about your own work and you're going to do an awful lot of bad paintings before you come up with good ones. Do I have a ritual of tasks that I do before I begin that inspires my work? Yeah, I make sure that uh, I have not forgotten ever anything. I make sure that my paints are wet, so I spritz them with water first before I paint. You don't want to do that and then take it out on location because the paint will be all over the place. But uh, before you start to paint, you may make sure your paints are, are moist, that you have all your brushes. Uh, mostly I use black silver velvet brushes that are a combination of squirrel and synthetic. The thing about squirrel is it holds a huge amount of liquid. It's kind of floppy, but it's uh, it's, a, it's dead. It you know doesn't have any spring, but it's very nice to work with. And uh, the other bright, these are all black silver velvet of various circumferences. Mostly I work with rounds. This is called a dagger brush, so it holds a huge amount of liquid, but it comes to a very fine point. So that's good for doing guy wires or telephone poles. This one is uh, a very cheap brush from China made with uh, goat hair. And I really like this because the difference between the, the Western brushes and the uh, brushes from Asia these have the long hairs uh, in the middle and the short hairs on the outside and are, they taper to a point. Whereas the goat hair brushes have the long hairs on the outside and they fold over the short hairs on the inside and they hold their point much longer. They're stiffer so they have more body and they hold good liquid. So this would actually be the brush I probably use the most. I don't really have a a message about from my art. It's just uh, to please people, uh, give them pleasure in uh, seeing a, a work that uh, hopefully moves them a bit. And uh, these are the things that uh, excite me and I hope will move people when they see the painting just to enjoy it. I, I don't have a worldwide message of peace or love. I mean, I hope that for everybody, but. My painting doesn't say that, really. How has COVID-19 impacted my artistic life? Uh, it's resulted in an awful lot of self-portraits <laughs> from mirrors. Uh, it's also prevented me from having live models to paint from. 
but it has also allowed me to discover Zoom and the models that pose on Zoom for places like Chesapeake Fine Art Studio. So uh, it's been good and bad. How do I believe the industry will evolve in the upcoming years? Well, there'll be several things that'll happen. One thing that's happening is digital painting is becoming accepted as a fine art medium. It has never been in the past. The other thing that is changing is uh, presentation is changing. Watercolor to be accepted in most watercolor societies had to be framed under glass, whereas now it can be sealed with acrylic varnish and presented on canvas or uh, in a regular frame without, without glass. And I think that will become the norm within the next five years. I tell you where you can find my work. Yeah, uh, I have a gallery in, in the house. Uh, currently, I'm not at a, uh, a, another gallery, uh, external gallery, but uh, you can find me on my uh, Facebook page. You can find me on Facebook at GaryHamilton.com. I would like to acknowledge the support of the Official Language Minority Community Media Consortium and the Government of Canada for the Community Media Strategic Support Plan.